Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is a July tour video that is a continuation of a very detailed tour that I started a couple of weeks ago. I did three videos in the uh, front garden space if you want to go back and take a look at those. And uh, this will be the second one for the uh, backyard space. Um, Holly has joined me out here as always. Griffin was in the window maybe right, right, when, this, right when this started, uh, but he's always uh, very, very busy and uh, that's why he's uh, not out here while I am filming. Uh, I'm gonna just do the, uh, the porch area here. There's a lot of detail here. There's a lot of um, annuals, perennials, ant shrubs, uh, and maybe even a vine uh, somewhere along this uh, little tour today. And we'll start where I left off um, the other day. One mistake I made in the last video is I said this was the, uh, the north side of the house. Uh, don't know what made me say that is actually the south side of the house but it's very very shady because of the uh because of the red bud that sits over it but for some reason that was my uh, mental um my my mental uh issue uh in the last uh video there's always one uh when you're uh, covering this many things uh, in a single video i've got four or three sorry three rectangular containers uh, on this corner, uh, just past this wajilia. This wajilia was the last thing in the last video. These containers have a lot going on in them. Uh, there's some uh, terrenia, uh, which is a great part shade uh, annual. If you, um, this spot that I'm standing in is getting some direct sun in the middle of the day, but uh, it's probably, I would can still consider this spot at least partial shade. But terrenia does fantastic hummingbirds. Hummingbirds love these. I've got some in pink that you'll see in another tour video. There's a nasturtium directly behind it with a flower on it. This one's kind of a light orange. Uh, you'll see uh, in other containers as we go, here's one that's a darker, a darker orange color there. Uh, all of these have variegated, all of these have variegated foliage and uh, it shows up differently on each plant. Uh, just just great. I've got them in, I don't know how many pots you're gonna see, uh, these nasturtiums. They were done from seed. Uh, there is a spike in this container, and I usually, you know, spikes are pretty readily available in the spring. Sometimes they'll survive the winter here, but most winters they do not. I just pulled off that nasturtium flower, but it doesn't matter because there's more, more coming. Uh, the other thing you'll see in these containers here in the part shade is there's several heuchera. So I've got a purple one in the back container, uh, kind of a... a this, I think this one's called buttered rum right here. It's not, doesn't have quite as much color because it's been covered up a little bit. And then there's a gold foliage one uh, in that container right there. I use Carex throughout uh, this landscape and this is a variegated Carex uh, right there. There's some, you'll see some Everillo Carex in a couple spots coming up, which is a solid gold one. Hard to miss with Carex. I like it much better than the Riope uh, and pretty much everybody watching can grow them because they're hardy up to uh, up to zone five. There were some, uh, there's some Swiss chard that I've left in this container because the stems are just so decorative. They're just, the stems are absolutely beautiful. And as it becomes kind of almost slightly woody, they become even more decorative. I also left it here because I let it come to seed. And this is what the seed looks like on a Swiss chard. I let a lot of things come to seed, even if I'm not going to take the seeds on them because the birds uh, appreciate uh, seeds left in the landscape. So things like cone flowers, especially, uh, you'll see the birds just go crazy for the seed. I've got some, uh, some verbena here that they love the seed on. Uh, kind of doesn't matter. Any, any, any perennial or annual that will put up seed like this, uh, I don't mind doing it as long as it's not an invasive. Uh, it's fine. There is some uh, variegated Solomon seal in this container and I definitely have deemed this a weed in the landscape. It just goes absolutely wild. But in this container, somehow it's just more vivid, brighter white color on it, just a fantastic container plant and almost nothing can kill it. So it'll come back in this container uh, every spring. There's a jalapeno pepper planted here. I'll plant vegetables and edibles throughout the landscape. Doesn't matter whether it's a decorative container or, or what, but uh, I'll just blend them in as an, the Swiss chard as an example. There's a jalapeno there. And then down here at the ground, there's a sage. So this is salvia officinalis. This is sage that you eat, but it also has a, uh, a very beautiful lavenderish uh, flower on it that uh, all the pollinators love as well if you just want to grow it as an ornamental, as an ornamental plant. Uh, there's some variegated vinca 
growing out of the edge. Again, this is another one that I just don't like. You know, if it sits down here on the ground too long, I'll cut it because I don't want it to uh, root into the ground. But it makes a great, great container piece. There are a couple salvia planted. You can see how many things, how much detail is just in these three uh, containers. There's a couple red salvia planted here. Hummingbirds will love these. This uh, uh, Swiss chard is going to come out and uh, something else will go into the corner now that I've shown it off and uh, allowed the uh, seeds to be uh, taken. Uh, there's a kufia here. Um, this one's called Sriracha Rose. Uh, this was the first kufia you're going to see. I think there are five, maybe five varieties in this backyard. Sriracha Rose is very popular with the pollinators uh, all day long. Uh, planted on the bed edge are Angelonia. So there's white, pink, and purple in some sort of rotation. And this is on both sides. This has been done on both sides of the porch. Again, this, in these videos, you're going to see that... Uh, um, I've got annuals on most of these bed edges, and they're here for the pollinators. I do have perennial things planted, though, uh, that, will take up, uh, that will take up some of this space in the future. So I'll have less annuals, but I'll always have some annuals. Uh, and a lot of these things uh, I've done from seed uh, here. Uh, I start most of this in February or March. My frost-free date here is April uh, 15th. And so, you know, about six weeks before that is when most of this seed uh, is started, the things I do from seed. Hopping into the bed, uh, in the back of the uh, larger container is an orange rocket barberry. This barberry would be much happier and a little more sun, and the color would be all this color, but because it's in part shade here, because this um, tree form on Corazelia is sitting over top of it, uh, it's, it's lost some of that color. I actually kind of like it like this. I like the, you know, it, it looks like it's, you know, it's five different colors on the same plant, so I kind of enjoy it in that spot occasionally this can be you know tip pruned about a third back and new growth will come back and it will all be uh, that color on it but again if i moved it out into more sun it would have more of that color but uh, i don't mind it I, I don't mind it at all i, th I think it kind of looks good uh, just like that uh, looking like it's multiple plants toward the back i've got a couple of uh, fats hedra uh, growing i'm eventually going to attach these to the side of the house this one right here is already uh, I'm six feet tall, so this one's right at five feet tall. At this point, I've got it staked with a bamboo stake. I'm going to put some little eyelets into the wall here and uh, put, some sort of, uh, put some sort of wire across that I can grow these onto this wall. So this will be all variegated. These are evergreen. They're, uh, they're hardy here, but they can take some winter damage. And so that's, I want this plant in part shade and up against the foundation so that uh, the winter's not too harsh on them. There's a David viburnum in this spot. Uh, really, really love the foliage on this one. This one blooms, blooms in the spring. Uh, I can let this get, you know, fairly big uh, in time, but I'm going to try to keep it about the same size it is now, maybe slightly taller. New leaves are coming out here. Uh, great plant. Uh, it's got to be mounded up. This one can be uh, finicky for some folks. Uh, I, I really don't have I don't have much of a problem with it, uh, but I know that others, others kind of struggle with it. I've always just mounted it up when I plant it so it doesn't stay abnormally wet. Uh, last thing on this little corner uh, before we get to the, uh, the containers on the porch is this is an Encore Azalea that's been tree formed. Uh, I showed these when I go down to uh, Alabama. The, the nursery that I visit down there does a lot of these uh, tree form Encores. They sell a lot to Home Depot, and I think that would be your best chance uh, in the spring to find uh, these tree formed uh, encores. I, I can't remember the, what variety this is. Uh, when it re, it's about to bloom again. So it's here we are in July and it's literally completely butted up. I mean, every, every single tip of every single stem on this plant is butted up. When it blooms again, I'll know what variety it is again. I, ju I just can't remember it. It's a, it's a light pink. Uh, unfortunately, there's 31 or 33 encore azaleas now. And so uh, light pink only narrows it down to about seven. One other thing I forgot to mention in this container was a sorrel uh, on the edge, which is quite decorative, uh, really beautiful. You can see the bee uh, working the uh, terrinia. Uh, again, I shoot these videos early in the morning and the, the bees aren't quite as active uh, as they're going to be, but uh, that's the sorrel in the corner. So again, just in that, those three little containers there, I've got four uh, edible plants or, um, or, or you know herbs or edible plants. And I'll do this. Um, throughout 
throughout the garden. I just like blending those things together. No rules on where you have to grow your edible plants uh, versus your uh, ornamental plants. There are a couple asters here, fall blooming asters, and I've, I've showed this every one of these videos. There's fall blooming things in these beds. And so, uh, you know, as all of these other things wind down, uh, those, those fall blooming things will happen. There's a, <laughs> there's a gold uh, sedum down on the ground. You'll see a much better example of this on the other side. I'm actually gonna let this wrap around and grow on this bed edge right up against the uh, turf. And uh, just, you, I'm literally going to use that sedum uh, as the bed edge around the front of these annuals, perennials, whatever it's going to be uh, in the future. Uh, I've put New Guinea and patients on both sides of the uh, steps coming down. So you have the turf that comes up to the steps. Uh, overall, uh, I, I, I liked how the screen porch turned out. I'm a big fan of the screen porch. The steps are a bit undersized for the screen porch and eventually I'm going to rebuild them and they're probably gonna come out to more like this. I think they need to be three uh, treads instead of two uh, to match the scale of the porch a little bit better. And a couple, a couple people watching the videos had actually said that it's, it wasn't, it hadn't gone over my head before they said it. Um, I think that again, the steps are undersized for what the, uh, for the size and the scale of the porch, but I'll eventually fix that. There's a dog door uh, up here. Um, and I get comments on that about it being blocked off. It will be unblocked when Griffin is ready for uh, the big time uh, out here and he can uh, control himself and, you know, not run through annual beds. Like if there was a rabbit or something out here, he would just go directly through things uh, to get to that rabbit. And I don't blame him. Um, he's, he's, he's young, so I can't blame him at all for that, but um, I can't have him out here uh, while I'm filming uh, doing that kind of thing. Uh, the containers that are in this spot are all squares. I don't know how many, I don't know how I've ended up with so many square and rectangular containers. They're good for these steps, but they're hard to use in the garden, honestly. Um, round, uh, the other round containers that you'll see in this backyard space, I think blend into the uh, garden much better. Those three rectangles uh, are a pretty good right there, but again, uh, squares and rectangles are just harder to use in general, but they do fit these steps uh, okay. This yellow flower here is a marguerite daisy. These are tough as nails, uh, good container plants, good in the ground as well, but just bloom and bloom and bloom. Um, there's a white uh, euphorbia. You'll see a couple more of these uh, in the garden. Uh, both of these are great, great for pollinators. This spike in the middle container here actually survived the winter. This is how mild of a winter I had that uh, this spike survived. Most of the time I leave the spikes in containers through the winter and you know, dispose of them uh, in the spring because you can get them pretty inexpensively. But this is what happens when one actually survives the winter. This thing's pretty, uh, pretty massive at this point. Uh, this is another one of those Sriracha Rose Kufia. Uh, hummingbirds really, really love these. Uh, there's another Kufia in the same container uh, called Batface. Uh, pull one of those up so you can see. Uh, you can see why it's called Batface. It literally looks like a bat face. Nice tubular shape to these flowers so the uh, hummingbirds, it draws in the hummingbirds. You'll see, again, you're going to see other kufia varieties coming. Those are in, that's two plants in a very small container and that one dries out way too quickly. I think I actually, I need to make a decision here to actually split those apart and put them in two separate containers because right now that thing's drying out twice a day. That happens on containers where you overplant them and then one is driving you crazy. Like the rest of these don't need to be watered. Uh, they need to be half as much water as that thing does. Uh, going back, you'll see several vinca. This one is a uh, tattoo blueberry and uh, uh, this whole series of vinca are really, really nice. I love the foliage looks great on them. Flowers look great on them. Uh, in the uh, back container, Terenia is reused. There's oregano. So again, here's another edible plant uh, being used and it's being used as my speller. It'll spill down over the edge of the container. This is a nightlight Cameociferus that I just tree formed in a video. Uh, you can go back and watch that video. But the, these normally grow as just a round ball, but I've limbed this one up into a tree form so I can underplant it uh, in containers. So another thing that survived the winter uh, is this cordylon. Uh, and, and it's very marginal here and again it survived the winter 
uh, I have to say that I actually had given up on this thing and put it in the compost pile and it poked its head out of the compost pile and so I dug it up and uh, put it in that uh, container right there. I'm going to start at the outside edge of the, uh, of the foundation planting here for the uh, porch and go back to the middle. Holly has decided to uh, take, up, um, take up the end spot there so that she can be uh, in the end of the video. Uh, this uh, salvia is called Patio Blue, and uh, I absolutely love this light blue color. I love the shape of that flower. It's a giant underperformer. <laughs> I mean, I really, really, really love that flower, uh, but it is way more leaves than flowers. And this is out here in a lot of sun at this point. Uh, it's getting everything it needs. It was, uh, you know, it's growing very vigorously but I can count on two hands the number of flowers at any given point on these uh, seven plants. So uh, as much as I love the color of that flower, I probably would not do this variety again at this point. There is a, uh, another sunshine ligustrum behind it, and uh, I showed the other one. The, la the first tour video of the backyard had the first one in it. I just keep these shaped into pyramids. They can be shaped into balls. They can be shaped into pyramids. They can be limbed up into trees pretty much anything you want to do with a sunshine ligustrum is available to you. The third or no, the fourth of the Daphne uh, in the tour videos is right here. Uh, this is Alba marginata alba. Okay, so Alba marginata means outside variegation. So it's got the white variegation on the edge of the leaf. And then Alba is uh, it means white for flowers. So this is a white flowering variegated Daphne. Again, I planted it in that expanded slate. So it's very, very well drained, and so far, I'm um, very, very happy uh, in this spot. It will bloom in February for me, typically. Uh, maybe as late as March, depends on how the uh, winter temperatures are going. This is an example of how I'm going to use that sedum on the other side. Uh, it just it just mats down fantastic, and I can cut along the edge with a uh, weed eater up on the edge to, uh, to keep a nice edge on it. There's some clover trying to come up in the middle of it right there, but... Uh, these two sedum, sedum combined to make a nice uh, ground cover. This container broke and this gold sedum was planted here. Eventually it'll just look like it's spilling down uh, into, the, uh, uh, into this area. There's some begonias. I underplant this windmill palm every year with begonias uh, and they look great around the base of it. Uh, pansies will go in there in the uh, winter time. Uh, this is a windmill palm, which are hardy in my area, but I keep my palms in containers. So if it was going to be extreme cold, uh, I would, uh, I'll be able to pick that thing up and put it on the porch or put it in the house or whatever I need to do. So you'll see two palms. Um, they are hardy. They could go in the ground, but I'm not going to risk a severe winter killing them. I needed to cut that bottom frond off right there and uh, b the bottom one. Slowly but surely, this thing will be limbed up over the years. One other thing I'll point out back here on the back of this container, because I pointed out a uh, sweet autumn clematis uh, on the other side. Uh, here's another vine that is a noxious weed. This is porcelain vine. It actually has beautiful berries on it. And just like that sweet autumn clematis, it has some ornamental value to it. Uh, but it is an awful, awful noxious weed and uh, so fast growing. But it comes up all over the landscape for me. I'm about to do a video on some summer, uh, summer weeds uh, that are annoying. And porcelain vine will definitely, definitely be on that, uh, on that list. Sliding around this way, we got the uh, Angelonia again. Again, the same uh, pink, purple, and white combo, and the New Guinea and Patience here beside Holly, which do fantastic in that spot. Um, the New Guinea and Patience will take more sun than traditional in Patience, and this spot gets about five hours of direct sun on it every day. Uh, moving behind uh, this front row again of the annuals that are planted for the pollinators, there's a blue spruce course in the winter it will be more pronounced um, because the annuals won't be planted around it. Uh, that dwarf blue spruce I had somebody say you know they looked you know after I shown it the first time they, I looked it up that thing can get 15 feet tall. Uh, I don't know that I'll see this thing ever get 15 feet tall. It's super slow growing so uh, I think it can stay here over the next 10 years and and uh, not cause me any problems but uh, uh, I think sometimes uh, Sometimes, you know, I, when I had the garden center and people would ask me how big a tree or something would get, and I would go 80 feet, and they go, oh my gosh, I'm 80 feet, and then I had to let them in on the, you know, the little secret that they won't see it, <laughs> neither will I, <laughs> but uh, 
but uh, it'll be fine here for for years to come uh, blue spruce do need a lot of sun but again i've got this in a that spot that's only getting about five hours of direct sun i don't think that that thing here in zone 7b in the south would really want to sit out in a place where it was sunny from the time the sun came up until it went down uh, a couple more weeds back here there's a purple pixie laura petalum that will basically act as a ground cover uh, in this spot and that purple and gold uh, together just look absolutely fantastic the uh, camellia that's planted directly behind it this is one of my favorite of the October Magic series. This is October Magic Orchid. It has a, a variegated uh, pink and white flower. It's budding up like crazy right now to bloom uh, this fall. Super, super happy here. This is another one of Bobby Green's uh, introduction, this whole October Magic series is. And it's such a clean plant. Uh, a lot of the old Camellia Sasanqua varieties get leaf spot issues, especially you know, with the amount of humidity we've had this year, but look how clean the foliage is on it. All of these camellias, sisanquas that I have in my yard are this clean, which is a really a new thing. Uh, uh, the old camellia varieties had been around so long, it seemed like the environment had caught up with them a little bit, and they, ha you know, they get a lot of spotting on the leaves, but again, these are just super clean. New genetics. There are more variegated and other hostas in storage all over this yard. Eventually, they'll be on the bed edges everywhere, but I don't know how many hosta varieties are actually here. Somebody asked me about deer, and I'm in the city. Uh, we do have. Um, I'll see one here or there, but I'm in such an urban space that I really don't have that big of a problem with deer. Rabbit are my, uh, are my big issue. I'll end this video with these uh, last, uh, what is it, five containers. Uh, on this side of the uh, on this side of the steps, uh, there's a sweet potato vine in here. Which how can you go wrong with a, a marguerite sweet potato vine uh, in a container? Uh, stuff will eat on it during the summertime. It's just not that not that big of a deal, but uh, it'll go absolutely as crazy as you'd want it to go. Um, you know, you can also get the darker foliage potato vines. I find that they don't show up all that well uh, in the landscape. They're kind of pretty on their own, but um, they don't make anything else. Uh, really pop um I, I just I, I just don't use them I, the gold ones work for me better this is more of that uh tattoo um series of vinca uh just easy 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 plants i never thought i'd say that about vinca I used to we had the old some of the old vinca varieties we had root rot issues in them and uh, they became super super hard to grow in the landscape but some new introductions um you know are quite vigorous and i don't see that uh that dieback that they used to get uh, there's a variegated boxwood. Again, this is another thing that's been kind of tree formed uh, and, and limbed up so that it can go in a container and still sit above the annuals and the other things that I'm putting into the container with it. Uh, I'm eventually going to put a second ball up on top of this one. I talked about it in the video where I actually limbed it up. The plant in the container behind it is, is a cryptomeria. This is a dwarf cryptomeria called Dragon Prince. I've got one of these in the ground as well. Love cryptomeria because they're soft to the touch. A lot of conifers would just eat you up if you did what I'm doing right now uh, with it. Um, big old spider web right here. Don't necessarily want to uh, find out what, what that one looks like this morning, what she looks like, but uh, it's a good looking plant in a container, good looking plant in the ground. Most of you can, can, grow, this, uh, can grow this conifer and it's more heat tolerant. Cryptomeria are more heat tolerant than some other uh, didn't, didn't like the blue spruce, uh, for sure. Uh, the big container on the back, uh, at first was like, ah, is it gonna turn out to be anything? Uh, and now it just looks fantastic. This uh, centerpiece here is a Utopia Plum U. Uh, these, uh, this is a Southern Living Plant Collection piece. Uh, so Actually, so is the Cryptomeria. Uh, great plants, great plants in the landscape. I planted them as a border plant in a part shade area at the old house. And uh, of course I left there before they had put on a whole lot of growth uh, at that point. But this, is, this one's been a fantastic container plant. It's underplanted with some wire vine. Uh, the wire vine does a good job of just covering the soil. I've got it planted in the ground in another spot uh, that I'll show you uh, later in one of these backyard tour videos. Again, this vinca vine is used in containers only uh, and uh, not in the ground. This is a polka dot plant. Polka dot plant I use um, every year in containers. They're just super, super easy. And that pink and green looks fantastic with this red coleus. Um, they just, they, they, ma they match so well. But I really, really do love that uh, container. 
in the uh, two little containers below it, I've got some portulaca planted. You'll see portulaca in several places uh, in this landscape. Um, kind of nothing more drought or uh, heat tolerant. The uh, flowers tend to be closed on them in the early morning and open up uh, during, the, uh, during the heat of the day. The last thing I'll point out in the front container, there's a croton. Uh, there's a variegated croton. This one just has uh, small yellow spots on it. Uh, we can use, uh, uh, crotons are fantastic in containers, probably 11 months out of the year here in my area. The worst of the winter uh, will kill them. So they, this, this one can just be put in a pot, brought in the house as a house plant for December, January, February, and then it can be used the rest of the year uh, in, in the landscape. And they make great landscape plants. And generally in the fall, you can find them because you know, they're orange and that kind of thing. And you'll see some of the landscapers will actually use them in their landscape plantings here. Um, they cost a little more than I would want to put, use them as annuals, but so, I'll, you know, I'll buy them, leave them in the house, and then plant them in the landscape uh, for, uh, for foliage color during the, uh, during the growing season. Thank you guys very much for following along with these tour videos. Uh, this is the second part of the backyard tour, and you can see why I'm breaking this up, because there's so many pieces. All you saw here was about 25 by... So about 150 to 200 square feet, maybe, uh, and there's a lot of different uh, variety in this space. Thank you guys for following along. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that little bell notification so you're alerted when I upload videos, and I'll be back with the next section in a few days. Thanks for watching.